Hey, welcome back to the Fine Home Building House 2022. I'm Joe, this is Travis. We're with Catalyst Construction, and today we're standing on our air barrier. I'm pretty excited about this air barrier because it's gonna solve a lot of problems down the road for us. You wanna give us some of the details, Travis? For sure, yeah, the, the vented over roof or back vented roof or however you want to describe it has become sort of a key feature of this because it does solve a lot of problems. This house has cantilevered exposed rafter tails uh, to make up our overhangs. And so they are continuous to our interior because of the longer length and because they're exposed, there's not a better way to solve that than having it be one piece. So we're accepting that thermal bridge sacrifice because it is such an important aesthetic with the tongue and groove on the back of it. In order to have the vaulted ceiling inside and not have to solve it in a way that we weren't comfortable with that was a little higher risk, we, we really like working with Rockwool. That's traditionally our insulation of choice. And so we utilize that vapor open insulation everywhere that we can because it just lowers our risk. To use that in a vaulted roof system like this, or a vaulted ceiling condition rather, we really need a way to vent the roof above it. So on top of this air barrier, as Joe's describing, we'll actually install furring strips on top of every rafter and do an entire second layer of decking to separate the, what I assume is about 95, 96 degrees today. Yeah. So it's probably gonna be like 140 degree attic temperature on the back side of that first layer of asphalt uh, roof. So in that cavity between the layer that we haven't installed and this layer, we can have all that ventilation happening with an inch and a half furring strip between the two. We have to account for the difference in the thickness from this half inch zip to the uh, three quarter inch tongue and groove so that we can have our roof all plain out. And in order to do that, we've got some rips in the garage. Yeah, we have an Avantic inch and an eighth we're gonna put over our tongue and groove, and then we're gonna go with an inch and a half furring strip on the whole roof body, more or less. And you know, one of the points of doing the over roof is that's gonna just give a longer life for our shingles. Oh yeah. In the Midwest, we have to deal with hail and other things, and you can't outguess you know, natural disasters. But overall, we're gonna put a 50 year roof on it. It's gonna be well ventilated and I think it's gonna last our homeowner a really long time. Yeah, it's definitely an added benefit the same way a rain screen extends the life of the paint job on your siding. You're really doing a, a big service to your house when you allow for that back vented situation. So this is our subfascia and our fascia. We ran that tongue and groove an inch back. So you can see I'm sliding my hand through here. That is my vent space. So then we have a furring strip on top of that three quarter material, but then we've also installed a bug screen. So in this ventilated intake chute, we're not gonna take any insects into this space. It's not gonna be a good home for anything to live in. So that's gonna allow the air to flow free all the way up to the ridge, and that's gonna reduce the temperature of this upper roof deck where the shingles, you know, in the summer in an attic, 120, 140 degrees. So if this were a typical hot roof, this roof deck to the interior temperature on a hot summer day could be a 50 degree temperature difference you know, 70 degrees inside and 120 on the roof in the sun, that's a lot of temperature difference to make up in that cavity. So by cooling this space, this cavity may only see 90 degrees. And now we're only dealing with a 20 degree delta T at that interior ceiling. If you want, follow me to the back side of the roof and we'll talk more about this. The other thing that we see here is the exposed framing at our screen porch. And this is not covered with zip sheathing because this is gonna have the same material as our soffit, and we want it to read from underneath as finished wood. And one of the real benefits of our over roof strategy is that we don't have to resolve for the roofing nails coming through that material because we've introduced that gap for our ventilation. So here on the back side, there's a couple different things going on. One, we have this cool sort of open skylight. No, no window will go here, but this skylight is actually to the grilling area on the screen in porch. That allows for that heat and potential cooking gases to escape because this will just remain open. But because the underside of the porch ceiling is that same one by six tongue and groove, this roof plane is actually three quarters thick and this roof plane is a half inch thick. And in order to make up that difference, once again, this will be an inch and an eighth furring strip, whereas this is an inch and a half. And you might be saying, well, why isn't it inch and a quarter an inch and a half? And the reason being, we added the Huber peel and stick underlayment. This product has a thickness to it that we wanted to account for. And this material is being utilized here to protect the wood because we don't want rain to ruin this 
before we get a chance to cover it with roofing. So on the underside, you don't wanna see any water stains and this is gonna protect us from that. This porch roof ends basically here and this is all interior to the kitchen. This is the exterior wall here and so that's why you see the change. So the next detail to talk about here is how we're gonna vent the valleys.